Hey guys, welcome back to part 8 of the broadcast receiver tutorial. So now we have learned about all the different ways in which we can send and receive broadcasts. But there is one important topic we haven't talked about yet. And that is what if you want to execute long running operations in one of your broadcast receivers. Now by default, the onReceive method of a broadcast receiver runs on the UI thread. And as you might already know, if we do a long running blocking operations on the UI thread, while our app is opened, the UI will freeze. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will put my threading video into the info card box in the top right corner. But the bottom line is we never want to do a long running operations on the UI thread. Now one option would be to just hand this long running work over to a component that is more suited, like an intent service or a scheduled job, for which I also have separate tutorials which you can find in the info card box. The other option would be to just start a new thread directly in our onReceive method. However, there is one problem with this approach. As long as onReceive is running, our broadcast receiver is considered to be a foreground process. Which means that it has a high priority and the system is very unlikely to kill our app if it needs system resources. But once onReceive returns, when this method here is over, this broadcast receiver is no longer active. Which means that the importance level of our app process now depends on which other components are currently running. If we have an activity in the foreground or a foreground service running, this is not a problem, because then our app is still active. But if we have a statically registered broadcast receiver in the manifest file, it can often be the case that after our receiver is completed, we don't have any other components running anymore. In which case the system can at any time kill the whole process. And if you have a thread running in onReceive, it will be terminated together with the app process, which can lead to unwanted behavior. So in a nutshell, your threading behavior in onReceive is never safe by default. But we can tell the system that we need a bit more time, even after onReceive returned. Which is pretty simple. Before we start our background thread, we call goAsync. And goAsync actually returns something. And that is a pending result. Then we start our background thread and do a heavy work on it. And from within this background thread, we call pending result dot finish once we are done. This way we tell the system that our work is over and it can recycle this receiver. Now if you look online and try to find out how much extra time this gives us, you will often see that this is up to 10 seconds. However, if we look a bit deeper into the documentation of GoAsync, we can actually see that it's only 10 seconds if whoever sends this broadcast uses this intent flag receiver foreground on the intent, which basically gives the broadcast a higher priority, so it's executed faster. But if we don't use this flag, we actually have 30 seconds or even a bit more. And when I tested it on my emulator, I actually always had a full minute. But it's probably good to stay within these 30 seconds. Because again, if you exceed the time limit, the system might just kill the process. And you don't want this to happen while your background thread is running with important work. And if you paid attention, you might have noticed that on this pending result, we have a lot of different methods. And if you remember part 6, those are actually the same methods that we had for ordered broadcasts. And this is what these methods here are for. Because if we combine go async with an ordered broadcast, we can actually keep a broadcast on hold before propagating it to the next receiver. Which is quite interesting, so let's take a look at this. For this I have set back the app to the same state that we had at the end of the ordered broadcast receiver video, which was part 6. If you want to follow along, I will put a link to the code for part 6 into the description box below. From there you can copy paste all the code snippets. So now we have all our ordered receivers here again. And let's switch over to ordered receiver 2, because this is one we have registered in the manifest file. So let's say in this onReceive method we want to do some heavy background operations. As we already know by now, we create a pending result and call go async. This way we tell the system, hey, keep our receiver alive even after our onReceive method returned. Then we start a new thread, to which we pass a new runnable. Again, I explained this in the threading video. Here at this red line, we call dot start. And then I'm gonna copy paste all the code here and paste it into the run method. But I'm gonna delete abort broadcast because I don't wanna abort it. Context shows a warning because we have to make this variable final since we want to access it from an inner class. Also, we can't show a toast message on a background thread. What we do is at the top, 
we create a final handler, the colored handler equals new handler. Since we initialize this handler on the main thread, we can use it to do work on the main thread. And then before toast.makeText, we simply call handler.post and pass a new runnable here as well. And in that, we put our toast method and put a semicolon here. For this, we have to make our string here final as well. And then we will simply freeze this thread with system clock.sleep for let's say 10 seconds, 10,000 milliseconds. This is just to simulate heavy background work. And now it gets interesting because all these methods here will now all return null after we called go async. Instead, we have to call these methods on the pending result. So before all these methods here, we put pending result dot, which has the same methods. Again, we have to make it final because of all these inner classes. And then we copy this for the other methods here, get result data, get result extras. And lastly down here for Z result. And then as already mentioned, we have to call pending result dot finish. Only after we have called this method, the broadcast will be sent to the next receiver. And this receiver here can also not receive another broadcast until we have called this method. If we don't call it, the system will just kill the process when the time is over. So let's test it. And now when we click send broadcast, we should see the toast message of ordered receiver 3 immediately because this is the first one. But the toast message of ordered receiver 2 should come with a 10 second delay and then the other ones. And we should still propagate all the data. So let's test it. Ordered receiver 3, 10 second delay. And there it is. And then OR1 and the sender receiver. Okay, so use go async whenever you want to tell the system that you will need some more time after on receive returned. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more intro tutorials. Take care.